So the real world is getting to have as much observational capability about us as the online world. It's just that the online world is designed from the ground up to have information be shared. The real world is not. Panopticon is a, an architectural design made by an architect in the 1800s, I believe. And the idea is that if you have a bunch of inmates, you would make a prison that was circular with a tower in the middle, and the inmates couldn't see who was in the tower, but the people in the tower could see any one of the inmates at any time, right? So since you don't know when you're being observed, but you could always be being observed, you self-modulate your own behavior, right? Well, this is an interesting idea because it's essentially what we're approaching as a species right now, right? So we know online, or at least most of us know that online, everything is being tracked. Uh, Google, Google's uh, DoubleClick has code on something like two-thirds of the top thousand websites to track you. Um, and even if you're using someone else's computer and they can't you know, put cookies or software on there, they'll still want monitor behavior. And Google only needs 22 points of data in order to identify a discrete individual. Well, now this is also starting to extend offline, right? So if you go to the store, Many stores are doing something where they're using infrared cameras to watch your eyes. So they'll see which product you look at and for how long. Now we've got new machine vision technology so we can see if you pick up a can of Campbell's soup and then put it back down and pick up a can of Chunky soup, right? Or we can figure out if you pick up Campbell's soup and then pick up your phone and then put down the Campbell's soup. It's even getting so discreet as what you ate for breakfast. So a new technology they're developing now primarily for airports is picosecond lasers. Love this. So this is a laser which can hit everyone in a 50 meter radius and simultaneously, more or less, and uh, figure out what temperature any part of their body is. It can do heart rate, breath rate, and it also detects off-gassing from the body. Um, it can recognize individual kinds of chemicals or components, so it can see if you've got drug residue on your shoe or explosive residue on your hair. It can also see if you have had a lot of coffee for breakfast by based on how much caffeine is coming out on your breath. Like incredibly intrusive stuff, but all data that's being gathered en masse, right? Well, what's interesting about the real world data from this proliferation of sensors, right? The traffic lights are all monitoring you and doing able to do facial recognition, stuff like this. What's interesting about this kind of our future 1984 scenario is that all those real world sensors are having all your data aggregated and sold and traded without you ever knowing it's being obtained. So the real world is getting to have as much observational capability about us as the online world. It's just that the online world is designed from the ground up to have information be shared. The real world is not. And so that data is starting to get, get captured and brought in. And I think that that's an interesting consideration. We've all heard lots about Bitcoin, this online cryptocurrency that hackers are using, except now that it's had the biggest run-up in valuation of any, any currency in the history of humankind. Because you can do it pseudo-anonymously, um, it's difficult to regulate, right, in many ways. So now you're seeing things like Iran or, or Greece, for example, where people are buying lots of Bitcoins to get their money out of the local currency. And as regulators and governments come in and try and stop this more and more, the only places that they're going to be able to stop this from happening is at the choke points where you trade that money out for another currency, which just means that I have to trade it from Bitcoin into Swedish crowns and then back to dollars, right? So there's an easy end game around that. And essentially it comes down to an issue of trust. And as we know, trust is in short supply when it comes to our existing financial systems, right? So, so when I talk to, to individuals about this, it's really exciting because it means that all the old standards upon which commerce or your life as a consumer was predicated might change. And when it does, the shift won't just be from the dollar to the euro or from credit to um, a debit system or from cash to, to credit cards. It's a, a transition from you have dollars and dollars are the only things that you can transact in to you have a reputation or a bundle of skills, relationships, knowledge, um, capabilities, connections, all of which have value. And the upside of this is that as an individual, the more you pursue something you're passionate about, the greater the value that it'll have. 
it's basically uh, an ecosystem tailor-made for freelancers, right? If all you do is punch a clock, you're going to be pretty poor in this. But if you spent your life getting really good at things or exploring things that are really interesting and being flexible about what you've accumulated in terms of skills and connections, now you're going to be able to start cashing in on those more and more. The upside or the, the positive spin on this would be that we're going to be emerging into a meritocracy where people that produce the most value for the whole get the most back. Right? And it's the abundance-oriented economy. I think that that's the, the potential upside for this, is that suddenly the entire world is able to pursue something that they really care about because there's the opportunity to do so, and then also to capitalize on that in a way that sustains them. The downside, of course, is that we might have you know, collapse of the global financial industry and that geopolitical entities will instantiate slave states, or I don't know what. But, uh, but there's a lot of room in between for some interesting effects. Hey, I'm Josh Klein, author of upcoming book, Reputational Economics, and you're watching Thinker.